Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and we're here at episode number 28 of the Pokemon Blue playthrough. In the last episode, not much happened. The previous few episodes, we dealt with the Saffron City Gym. We got our fifth Pokemon League badge. The episode after that, we captured the Snorlax on route, I forget, but it's the one south of Lavender Town. And yesterday, not yesterday, it's the last episode that we did, we actually just started getting our way towards Fuchsia City, dealing with a good number of trainers along the way. So let's get a quick team recap as we kick off the episode. We're looking a little bit hurt for some of us, but we have our level 35 Critter, the Butterfree. He has a, a special set of 71. He's got Psybeam, Mega Drain, Stun Spore, Sleep Powder. Next we see Shelbert, the Starter Squirtle at level 36. He has got the Bubble Beam, Ice Beam, Bite, and Withdraw move set. Here is Rocky, the level 35 Sand Slash. 91 attack. I love seeing his attack set at the start of each episode. Dig, Rock Slide Cut, and Sand Attack is his move set. Pikachu, the level 36 Pikachu, of course. 84 speed. I love that too. He's got Thunder Shock, Body Slam, Thunder Wave, and Flash. Here we see Chirp, who actually, I should say something did happen last episode. Chirp evolved into Pidgeot. He is now at level 37. Speed is 87. Excellent. He's got Fly, Quick Attack, Sand Attack, and Whirlwind. And finally, rounding up the team at level 36 is Squeak the Eradicate. He is our fastest. He's at 90 speed. He's almost hitting 100 in the speed stat. Hyper Fang, Quick Attack, Focus Energy, and Tail Whip. So, what we're going to do in this episode is continue our way towards Fuchsia City. And there's not really going to be too much to talk about in-game, because it's going to be a lot of just training along the way. So I'm going to try something I normally don't do. I'll just read what they say here. Pokemon Fight, Cool Rumble. Now... I watch a lot of other LPers on YouTube, and sometimes they'll talk about, like, not necessarily what's on screen, because I figure, you guys can see what's happening. You don't need me to read everything out. So, although, I think I kind of lead, or lead a somewhat boring life in some respects, I actually would like to just talk about, you know, some general stuff going on. So, it's currently Sunday as I record this, and normally I don't really do too much outside of basically, you know, record some videos for YouTube, and just go about my usual daily routine. But today, actually, I did do a good number of things, and now that we're getting into the better weather with uh, winter finally behind us, I believe, although I did hear somewhere in my area there was a uh, snowfall today, which is kind of crazy for near the mid of April, but uh, it's actually getting to the better weather right now. I'm going to be able to get out and start doing things a little bit more, and essentially, just living my life. So, today, actually, once per month, at a local, what would you call it, uh, sort of almost like a community center type of thing, the Knights of Columbus, which is a local group that does some charity work, they actually hold a pretty decent charity fundraising breakfast. And I actually tweeted about it over the weekend. You get, uh, for like $7, you get this really amazing breakfast. You get like pancakes and sausage and ham and what else? You get hash browns. So there's all sorts of awesome stuff you get for only $7. It must be food that's donated from local businesses because there's no way. Like, I've gone out to eat breakfast at restaurants and you're not getting as much as this charity gives you for seven bucks. So it's got to be donated items. And it's interesting because growing up, I never really had that much of an appetite when it came to breakfast. It wouldn't be till around, say, noontime or the afternoon I would actually find myself getting hungry. And actually trying to eat something too early in the day would kind of make me feel a little bit sick. So... It's interesting how things can change, you know, like I actually have, I'm just going to see what they say here. Raising Pokemon's a drag, man. It certainly can be. There was nothing up there. Okay, so, but, yeah, like nowadays I can actually eat a pretty decent breakfast in the morning. And do you folks out there, do you actually like to have, like, just sort of a minimal breakfast to get you started for the day? Or do you like to eat a whole bunch of stuff to uh, kind of fuel yourself for a good long while leading into your day? So this is a little bit of interaction I'd like to have with you guys if you're interested in answering that question. It's not one of the official questions of the day, which I use for giving out the TCG code cards, of course, but just a little bit of a chat going on, I guess. If you're interested in big breakfast or small breakfast or whatever, like, you know, just basic eating habits. So I did that today. I forgot to switch Critter. He actually leveled up. And here we get to the problem of me trying to chat about stuff that's not on screen while playing games on screen. I lose track of things. I have to, like, work on my multitasking, you know? So anyway, we get this... Two more Pokemon coming up here. I'll switch Critter after this. So, I was going to record these Pokemon Blue episodes right after I did the breakfast thing. Usually after I have that nice big meal, though, it's kind of like I kind of have to relax a little bit and just let it digest and all that. But I actually didn't really have time to record during the afternoon because I had to get ready to go and see a movie with a couple of people. We actually went to go see Batman vs. Superman today. And I know it's been out for, like a, I think, a couple of weeks now. But this was the first time I got a chance to check it out, and it was decent. There were some things that I found a little not as impressive as I would have liked, but 
overall, you know, it was a pretty enjoyable movie, and I liked all the action in it, and some nice nods to the, you know, original comic books and everything, so it was actually a pretty good time. Now, I'm not gonna get into, uh, not gonna get into any sort of, like, in-depth review of it or anything, because I don't want to provide any spoilers, of course, but if you're interested in superhero movies, definitely I would say go check this out. Now, I'm sure, I've, I've said this along the way, but I think after seeing Marvel's success with the Avengers series, they probably thought, you know, DC thought, we want to actually get our own team of superheroes, because they have the Justice League. we got to get our own movies going. So, I said all along the way that I know this is going to basically just be the beginnings of the Justice League as far as DC movies go, and naturally, good, mirror move failed. I thought you were going to throw rocks at me. And I missed! But anyway, um, what was I saying about, uh, yeah, so, uh, the Justice League. Now, initially when they announced Batman vs. Superman, I thought, I know that's not really going to be the overall focus, well, kind of is the focus, but the, I guess, the end story, you know, I expected something else was going to happen, and I'm not going to say anything, but they did change the, or gave the subtitle, Rocky wants to learn Swift, is there anything we can replace for Swift? No, we're going to keep what we have, yes, we'll abandon that, I do have that TM, of course, for Swift if I want to teach that later, but... I'm getting all sidetracked. I was talking about Justice League, and I'm just going to cut our way through here. And now I'm getting all sidetracked trying to think. So Rocky did just level up. Let me just switch him out first, and I'll try to get back to my original thought. Um, who is next to gain a level? Shelbert is next. Right there? Okay. So I was talking about... Yeah, like, so they gave the subtitle of Dawn of Justice. Now, of course, that is sort of alluding to the fact that this is the beginning of Justice League, and I'm sure that's what they're going for with some of the scenes that they showed in the movie, and it's going to be cool to see how things kind of play out in the DC movie universe. Of course, the movie I'm really interested in uh, looking forward to right now is going to be Captain America Civil War, because I've been seeing some trailers for that, and that comes out, I forget when, I think it's May 5th or something, like the first weekend, wiggly tough, look at this, but the first weekend in May, I believe, is when it comes out. And I've always been more of a Marvel fan than a DC fan. And this could be some more interaction to chat with you guys as well. Do you have a preference of either or comic book universe? Or you like both equally? Or is there actually another comic book universe that you follow? Like, I'm, I know there's like Image Comics and Dark Horse Comics. And I'm not super into comics as I used to be back when I was younger. But uh, as far as the movies go, I actually am quite interested in the Marvel characters. It was funny when the first Avengers came out, I had been following the Iron Man movies and the Hulk movies as well, but I didn't really follow Thor or Captain America because I wasn't as interested in those characters, but after seeing the two Avengers movies thus far, I kind of want to go back and just kind of marathon every Marvel movie leading up to every, you know, Avengers that comes out. So here we see a Pikachu versus Shelbert. Should be able to get some good damage off with Bubble Beam if we get through the Paralysis of Thunder Wave. But yes, so do you have a preference of either or movie, sorry, comic book universe, or a different actual comic book universe altogether? So feel free to leave that in a comment. We can get a little bit of a little interaction, a little bit of chit-chat feedback back and forth here. And Pikachu keeps going for Swift. Can we break through? Nope. Two paralysis in a row. We gotta land that bubble beam soon. But that was pretty much my day for the most part. Had that nice breakfast. Looking forward to the next one coming up in May. It's always good to go, or, you know, all the money. That's a Raichu. Let's get Rocky out here, please. Where is he? There he is. But it's always good that the money that they raise goes to a good charity. And generally, like I say, it's like $7 for your meal. But just to save on some change, and just because it's going to a good charity, I always just give them like 10 bucks and say, keep the change, you know. The amount of food you get, like you would easily spend, say, 15 close to 20 bucks at an actual restaurant. So I, I can easily donate that extra 3 bucks. Another trainer is down, as we're going along the way. Now, I think there's trainers up top there, too. I'm going to have to go back and deal with them as well. I didn't heal Shelbert. All right, this guy just got these Pokemon. So we're actually making pretty good headway. This is the last route that's going to be leading us into uh, Fuchsia City. So first things first, I'm going to heal up Shelbert. And thus far, I've actually, I think I've run out of kind of miscellaneous things to chat about, so I think I actually did pretty good. We didn't lose anybody. Of course, if this was a Nuzlocke, I might... I just use Withdraw instead of the uh, Bubble Beam, but I think that might actually help us by this accent that I just did. 
but we didn't do too bad. Now, if it was a Nuzlocke, I probably would be a little more focused on the game itself to make sure I don't lose anybody due to distraction or anything like that. So, since it isn't a Nuzlocke, I do have the kind of leeway to be a little bit more chit-chatty about just kind of like current events and such. But now that I've kind of run out of things to talk about, I'm going to get focused on this match here. So Shelbert did just level up. If he gets poison, I'm going to swap him out. We'll keep him in until that time, or if he gets too weak. So I want to be able to spread the experience around. Now once we get into Fuchsia City, there's only a couple of things we really need to do there. And then you're going to see some pretty interesting stuff starts to happen in this playthrough. I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's some... I'm just going to say there's some... Some things of legend coming up. That basically spoils it right there. But anyway, I'll just wait and see what happens. Don't self-destruct. I kind of didn't even realize that is a thing that can happen right now. There's the poison, but we can drop this wheezing before we switch him out anyway. I wonder if he's going to gain another level from this. I'm thinking probably not, but... Nope. Alright, so another coughing. Now we're going to go into good old Pikachu, who is actually kind of weak. Let's go... Critter. After this, I want to try and get some potions onto my guys. So our Butterfree comes in to go for the side beam versus this Poison-type coughing. We're getting low on the PP as well, but we're almost at Fuchsia City. What I might actually do is try to clear out the trainers on this bottom ledge, and then go heal up, get our PP back, and come back and tackle the other trainers. Although I don't think there's that many up on top. I don't know. We'll see. Once I get to the guard post outside Fuchsia City, we'll see what the team's looking like. So we drop this biker. Why not? Shelbert, would you stop this? You are a Squirtle for life, my friend. There we go. Squirtle, stay Squirtle. Alright, let's go for the Super Potions. And we're going to heal Shelbert, Pikachu, and Squeak. Just make sure they're all in Fighting Spirit. We're going to have to restock on some items pretty soon, too. But we're getting a lot of money off of these trainers, at least. Alright, Squeak is the last one. I'm going to give Shelbert an Antidote as well, so we can heal, heal that Poison away. Yeah, we got six super potions left. Definitely want to grab some more of those before our next gym battle. So, next for the level is going to be Pikachu. We'll put him to the front. And let's move on to this trainer over here. Another biker. Fork over all your cash when you lose me, kid. That is actually not true. You lose now. I forget how much you lose. I've heard that it's half of your total earnings. But I think they might have changed that in later generations. I actually don't know, because how often do you lose to in-game trainers, you know? All right, Pikachu, let's go with the... start with the Body Slam, first of all. Go for another one, I think, possibly getting some more chance at the Paralysis on this. No Paralysis, but we can drop this with a Thunder Shock now. He's got to be pretty close to getting Thunder, I have to imagine. So the Coughing is down. Next we see a Grimer. Well, I think your defenses are less than that Coughing, so two Body Slams might do the trick, especially with one being critical. And you disable... The body slam, which is all right. I was gonna thunder shock you, anyways. All right, what is your last Pokemon? It's going to be a Weezing. Well, the physical defense is actually pretty good, so I wouldn't probably want to body slam you anyhow. But your special, I think, is still quite decent. Our defense, on the other hand, is not so good. The smog is gonna do a good 10 HP, it looks like. But good old Pikachu with the critical hit, and I think I mentioned in a previous episode how. Pikachu always seemed to be sort of like a, a jerky kind of a Pokemon where like whenever I would lose somebody, he would come in and go for the critical hit, but I actually got to switch him out now in favor of Squeak. We can get the drop on the Weezing with a nice Hyper Fang attack. I don't think your defense is good enough to handle that. Let's land the Hyper Fang. Down goes the Weezing. All right. We are almost at Fuchsia City. That can't be true. It certainly is true. We're only a hop, skip, and a jump away. I was just joking about the money. Okay, you are lucky you were just joking. Uh, antidote for Pikachu. And a super potion, it looks like, because he's in the yellow. Got five of them left. I think our team's PP is decent enough that I can actually just circle back and deal with the top trainers as well. Depending on how many of them are left down here. Let me try out the Pokemon I just got in trade. I wonder if they're going to have any of the trade evolution Pokemon. Golem, Alakazam, Gengar, or Machian. Nope, there's a Gloom. Pikachu, of course, not that good. Their defenses are actually nice, but I'm going to still Body Slam away. Two more, we'll get the Knockout. And 
I try for the poison powder, it does miss, fortunately, and it lands this time. But due to Gen 1's awesome programming, knocking them out means I won't take poison damage this turn. Next, we see an Oddish, or an easy start for the body slams on you as well. You probably survive one, however. Yeah, easily surviving one body slam. And the Acid Attack. It is a physical type move in this generation, of course. All poison type moves are. But we do get the Oddish down with another body slam. Another Oddish, alright. This is a pretty easy cleanup. Two more body slams. And Pikachu is going to gain possibly a level after this, I'm hoping. So a nice thing about dealing with the Saffron City Gym before Fuchsia City is the fact that our team is actually going to be at a decent level to deal with Fuchsia City as opposed to Saffron Gym. And level 37 Pikachu, okay. Not good enough. You can't change the nickname of any Pokemon you get in the trade, only the original trainer can. So you have to trade them all the way back to that original trainer, which in this day and age of Wonder Trade is pretty much impossible. So Pikachu is at a higher level, we're going to swap him out for Squeak now. He will gain the next level. And let's sneak up behind this little lass here. I raised Pokemon because I live alone. So they're like your friends, your family, your compatriots, okay. Certainly nothing wrong with that. It's actually not a lass, it's a beauty to Pokemon. It's a Bulbasaur! We've dealt with you many times. We're going to Hyper Fang you with no Oh, we missed. And the Poison Powder. Let's go ahead and just go for the quick attacks then. I think two should probably drop you. Yes, one more will get the KO. Of course, we can easily go for the Antidote. Now, we have been Leech Seeded. So we're probably going to Hyper Fang whatever else she sends in. I'm expecting Ivysaur, just based on what I just saw here. Yep, Ivysaur. Let's go for that Hyper Fang. We land this one, fortunately. And it is almost a one-hit KO. Next, we're going to go for the Quick Attack and drop this Ivysaur. Of course, we're already seeded. The Leech Seed has no effect on us. And Eradicate drops the Stage 1 Grass-type starter. I didn't ask for this. Nobody asks to lose. Well, you might if you're uh, kind of confused. I just like to be... I just like going home to be with my Pokémon. Let's grab ourselves an Antidote for Squeak. As I've said many times throughout this playthrough, Guts ability is not a thing in this generation. Route 15 west to Fuchsia City. Oh, there's still a lot more trainers than I thought. Huh, my birds are shivering. You're good, aren't you? I'd like to think so. I'm over halfway through the Kanto Pokemon Gym Challenge thing before the Elite Four. Alright, we have a Dodrio. Look at this. Three-headed Dodo Pokemon. Should get the KO with Hyper Fang. Their defenses, although, as you say, their defenses aren't good, but actually, the Doduo I've been counting, encountering have been surprising me with their defenses. Had a little bit of a hiccup, excuse me. Let's try for the quick attacks on Doduo. I was expecting they were going to survive it anyway, despite, you know, in light of what I just said about their defenses. But we do drop that with two quick attacks. And Squeak has level 37. Alright. And another Doduo. Let's just go ahead and Hyper Fang. We should drop that in a single one. Down goes the 6th and 7th heads of these bird Pokemon. Just as I thought. Nice 700 bucks. Did you know moves like Earthquake don't have any effect on birds? I most certainly did. Alright, now we're going to go with Critters next. Chirp already hit level 37 because I used him a little bit extra back when he first evolved to Pidgeot in the last episode. When I whistle, I can summon bird Pokémon. Interesting! Can you summon the legendary bird by any chance? Probably not. And we got four Pokémon on this side of the field. It's going to start with Pidgeotto. Of course, not the best for our Butterfree, but we know Pidgeotto doesn't have any flying-type moves yet, or does it learn Wing Attack by now? I do not recall if Chirp tried to learn it by level 26. But a powerful-sounding Psybeam, half down, and the other one gets the KO. Chirp drops the Pidgeotto. Of course, we are 10 levels higher. Level 37! We're just gaining all these levels along the way. And a Farfetch! We saw you last time. Let's go for the side beam once again. And I've already run out of other things to talk about. Now I'm just reading off everything that was on screen. So, 
Actually, something else I can talk about. Let me know down below. Would you prefer just kind of random chatter throughout the day, or you know, about my day throughout the playthrough, or do you prefer me to sort of stay more focused on the game itself? Because I can try either or. The only downside is, like I said, there's occasionally there's really not much for me to mention from my daily adventures of you know, what else I'm up to other than the videos themselves. I'm gonna switch Critter out because we're out of side beams and the birds will resist the uh, Mega Drain. But yeah, feel free to let me know if you prefer kind of basic chatter where we can actually kind of more, you know, engage with one another in the, you know, what our interests are and such like that, because that's one of the things I like about this channel is it's not just, like, I want to provide entertaining content for everybody, of course, but I also like the idea of just being able to connect with more people. And that's what, that's what YouTube is really good with. Like, I'm providing some fun, you know, experiences and entertainment here. Ow, that's tragic. But, uh, hang on one second, maybe I'm not cut out for battles. Well, I just cut down your, uh, was it a Pidgey at the end? And one more trainer down here. Want to play with my Pokemon? I didn't switch out Critter. Hopefully we can use some Mega Drains on whatever she sends in. But, what am I trying to say? I keep getting sidetracked with everything else going on other than the game. But I do like, you know, engaging and like, just talking with other people and stuff. And that's one of the nice things about an interactive thing. Like, I just sent a ground type in against a grass type. I will get better at uh, talking about non-game stuff while being able to focus on the game. But for the time being, let's see if I can pull through easily cutting down that Bellsprout. Alright, next Pokemon coming in is an Oddish. I think I'm just going to dig for this one. But, yeah, so I like providing, you know, entertaining content and such, like these videos here. But it's also good to just kind of connect with more people. Alright, in a Tangela. I think you're gonna take a rock slide and not actually. And bind attack. Well, we can easily handle that. You're doing 2 HP per bind, so that is not a problem whatsoever. Once we are free, we can throw the rock slide, try to flinch you, and then cut you down to size. That is four binds in a row. Am I gonna get the full five? You actually do. But that's alright. It was only, what, 10 HP total damage taken off of our defensive sand slash. This should certainly drop, not, maybe not drop, but that was a critical hit. That's gonna hurt. Our special's not that good on our sand slash. Let's go for another rock slide. And then I think a cut should bring you down. Or not. We'll just drop it with a critical. That is okay in my book. I was too impatient. I'll go train with weaker people. Sounds like a plan. Alright, so let's go ahead and finish up this route. We're going to let Rocky take the lead. I'm just going to go to the top of this ledge here. Let's bike all the way back, because of course we can only go back here to go up. Out of the way. I'm not going to go for any wild encounters right now. They're pretty much the same thing that you would encounter back in the earlier grass that we checked out already. So let's cut our way through this little bush. And it looks like we're on par to actually enter Fuchsia City by the end of this episode, which is definitely very nice. What's cool? Trading Pokémon! Well, I'm not interested in any trades at the moment. Of course, I have a pretty decent team as it is. Plus, I do have that Snorlax, Snoozer, chilling at the daycare right now. Clefairy! We're just gonna go for the dig. We don't need to preserve the PP too much right now, because there's only, I think, maybe two trainers up on this upper ledge. One hit knock it with Dig Attack. And only one Pokemon, nice. I said trade! Nope, I don't really want a Clefairy at the moment. I trade Pokemon with my friends. Excellent. Definitely a good... Hey. No more room for items, but actually, can we toss anything? We've got two X accuracies, rare candy. I could actually... I can probably toss the Master. Nope. PP up. Well, I would rather sell the rare candy. I'm just going to toss it. I got a pretty good amount of money right now. Yeah, we'll toss this. I'm pretty much swimming in the cash. Here we find TM20, and what is this one going to teach if I decide to use it? We find TM20 has Rage. And everyone can learn it? No one's going to. I don't know if I mentioned Rage before, but in this generation, choosing Rage locks you into it permanently, like, as long as that Pokemon stays in battle. Are you working on Pokedex? Professor, Aid, Professor Oak's aide came by here. Oh. Could be a new item he's going to hand us. If we have enough Pokemon, of course. Here he is. Hi, remember me? I'm Professor Oak's aide. If you caught 50 kinds of Pokemon, I'm supposed to give you an experience all. So 
So, Chaz, have you caught at least 50 kinds of Pokemon? <laughs> no. Oh, I see. When you get 50 kinds, come back for experience all. Gee, your demeanor changed. Okay, look in the binoculars. A large shining bird is flying towards the sea. That... That's Articuno! Interesting. Okay. Look in the binoculars. It looks like a small island. I think it's talking about seafoam islands, which we will get to before too long. But as we come this way... Excuse me, voice break. We enter... Nice, purplish looking, maybe sort of pink, Fuchsia City. Safari Zone has a zoo in front of the entrance. Out back is the Safari Game for catching Pokemon. Nice, we have finally reached the site of our next gym battle, but there's actually a fair amount of stuff to do in Fuchsia City before we take on the gym. First things first, we're going to head into the Pokemon Center and give the team a nice, well-deserved rest. Did Rocky get that level yet? No, he didn't. So we're going to leave him at the front of the party. Over this way, we're going to get into... Let's just check this house out. we got some time to kill. Bill flies... <laughs> Bill files his own Pokemon data on his PC. Did he show you? Well, he actually didn't, but I uh, kind of hacked his system and checked it out myself. Savari Zone's Warden is old, but still active. All his teeth are false, though. Every last one of them. And this gentleman... Hmm? You've met Bill. He's my grandson. He always liked collecting things, even as a child. He likes collecting the EV evolutions in this generation. Here's the Pokemon Center, going for a nice heal up. So we're gonna just talk to the people in the center, see if there's any items or good advice they have to give us, and after that we're gonna save up the game. So I'm hoping I did pretty good for my first kind of attempt at non-in-game chatter and conversation. You can't win with just one strong Pokemon. It's tough, but you have to raise them evenly. That is certainly true. If you're studying Pokemon, visit the Safari Zone. It has all sorts of rare Pokemon. That is certainly true. There's a lot of hard-to-find Pokemon in there. There's a narrow trail west of Viridian City. It goes to Pokemon League HQ. That's the route I looked at back in, I think, the second episode. The HQ governs all trainers. So that is all to do here. I'm actually going to drop some items in the PC just to free up the space. Because there's going to be some items we pick up in the city, or rather in the Safari Zone. I want to clear up some space. We don't need the TMs. We can actually... Put away the card key now, too. We can put away the Earthquake TM, 26. I'm not going to use that Master Ball anytime soon. I will put that in as well. I don't want to accidentally hand it to a Roaming Legendary who will then throw it in the garbage the moment it leaves. I'll talk about that more later in a future episode of uh, Playthrough. And deposit all of these TMs. I wonder how full the PC is getting right now, because all the TMs... Well, I think the PC gives you space for 100 items. And of course, there's only 50 TM. We don't have them all yet, so we should be good for space for the time being. And let's store away that PP up. So with that, we're going to head over towards the entrance, but we're going to save our game. So we have reached our close to half hour mark. Saving it up here. And with that, this episode now comes to an end, so feel free, as I said previously, to leave some comments in response to the, uh, the basic chatter I was engaging with you in early in the episode. And also let me know what you think so far of this playthrough, and if you're looking forward to anything in particular coming up, feel free to leave that in a comment as well. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Until the next episode, which will be on Thursday, this is Professor Chaz signing off. I'll catch you next time.